So I'm here with my friend Kristen. Um, she's amazing. Totally love her. I get to work with her every single day. It's such a blessing. Um, and we're extremely similar in a lot of ways, but then there's something about us that is vastly different, and that's our belief system and our faith. Um, and so I wanted her to come from a little bit of a different perspective. I think for someone like you who has a very strong belief system, your immediate answer is to pray. You know, and um, and that is great, and it works for you, and it works for many people, obviously. Um, but for someone who doesn't believe, um, it's not an easy answer. And I know it's not an easy answer for anybody, but um, when someone doesn't have that faith, uh, it's almost insulting, I guess. You know, oh, just pray about it, you'll be fine. When that isn't exactly the answer that we're looking for, and I think, you know, people mean well, and I know many people pray for me and my family. Thank you. Um, You're and <laughs> and um, their suggestion is certainly what they would do, and certainly not meant to be offensive. But um, telling someone who's, you know, severely depressed or is going through anxiety to just pray about it, you'll feel better, and they don't feel better then not only are they dealing with the issue to begin with, but now they're dealing with the issue of, but I've prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and my prayers are being answered, and I still feel like crud, and I don't know what to do about it, because the answer is to pray, and so now they have that on top of it. Well, I'm, I'm already not good enough, and now I'm not praying hard enough, and my faith isn't strong enough, and so it just kind of exacerbates the issue, I think, sometimes. Friendship, and how... There have been different relationships where when somebody told you that they're a Christian, it was very difficult for you to just be open and to be able to be real and share the things from your heart that you're dealing with. But you and I have shared many difficult things. We have walked through some of the hardest moments of my life, and I know that you've had some really rough spots as well. Um, and we've been able to balance our friendship in a way that I think we make each other stronger. What has been the difference of you being able to talk to me and open up to me, knowing I have a certain belief system, but being comfortable enough to just say, let me just be real. Well, I think it's been a process, you know. I think um, mutual respect, of course, would be the first thing on my list. But when we began our friendship, um, you know, I think we were close at first and we hit it off really well and we are very similar in a lot of ways. But going through trauma, you know, brings people closer together, obviously, and, you know, when when we dealt with Spencer's issue and, you know, our family and you were there and you never said, just pray about it, and you understood where we were coming from. I completely understand that your faith is different than mine, and I completely understand that you approach things differently, and you completely understand that I do the same thing. Never once do I feel judged. Never once do I see that in your eye, you know, that, oh, she only believed, if she only knew what faith could do for her, you know, you never have done that to me. Um, and we've gone through some pretty rough spots, you know, where we were there for each other. And, and when you deal with terrible things, tragic things, being there for each other is much more important than, you know, my belief is this and you should believe my way and, or vice versa. So I think um, just respecting each other and knowing um, knowing that we're there for each other regardless of what the situation is, knowing that you know a lot of what I'm going through because you've been there and um, vice versa. So I think, yeah, that's kind of, you know, not, not being judgmental. I believe that we are called to go out and to love people the way that Jesus loved them. And that's my belief system. And he was accepting. And he represented love. And he represented coming alongside someone, taking them where they're at, and just purely loving them. And it's always been, and will always be about love. Mm -hmm. Did you love enough? Did you make people feel like they had purpose and mm -hmm. they had value and that their life matters? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, that's kind of where I stand in my faith and how that center has made me who I am and just wanting to reach out 
and get many different perspectives so that anyone watching will be able to say that I relate to that. Well, for me, it's my family, you know. Um, they give me great joy, and when I'm sad, they're there for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, there I go. Okay. I need a tissue. Um, you know, I have a rough job. You obviously know that. Um, my, job's, my husband's job is also very stressful, and so it's easy to get bogged down in all of that. But, you know, it's our, it's our job together to, to, you know, hold each other up. It's, you know, I have to be there for my kids. You know, I guess some people don't feel that way, but, um, you know, I have this friend at work who's always telling me to find the good in things. And, you know, are we thinking positively? You know, she'll never say, stop being so negative. But she always says, you know, is that positive? You know, and and I strive to do the same thing. My reasons clearly aren't the same. Yeah, you know, you have all these women, children, men, even who are dealing with all kinds of issues, but no one wants to say anything because they don't want to be judged, and they um, they don't want people to think there's something wrong with them. And when we were dealing with Spencer's issues. She was missing a lot of school, as she said. And so, you know, it's, I, I would give her notes, you know, she wasn't feeling well, she's, you know, slept, you know, and these notes started piling up until finally I sent a note to the attendance clerk that said, you know, she's dealing with some anxiety issues. And um, I immediately got a phone call after she got that note. And, you know, she was like, why didn't you say something? We could have dealt with this a whole lot differently if you had said something. And the attendance clerk, you know, your first thought is to go to the school counselor or your doctor for medicine or whatever the situation may be, a counselor. Um, but my advice would be to say it to as many people as you can to, you know, because you never know if the person sitting next to you on the bus in a pew, you know, at work is dealing with the same issue. You know, you don't have to go and say, you know, I'm, I'm miserable, but, you know, we can all help each other. It doesn't matter what faith we have, where we come from, we can all help each other. And, you know, if you, if you can be honest with people and know that it's okay to be honest with people, then I think we can all be much, much happier um, and not worry about the judgment. And, and that's hard. You know, there, there's... People I see every single day that I would not share the things with that I would share with you or, you know, many of my other friends because I just, I don't trust that they would be accepting mm -hmm. and that's just really sad and I think, um, I think you should, you know, be careful about how you approach your faith, especially if you know that you're talking to someone who's a non-believer because I might be a believer if people didn't use it as a tool, mm -hmm. you know, anything of that, that's hurtful, mm -hmm. I think, so. It hurts you mm -hmm. being a believer, and it hurts me not being a believer. And so, when you said, you know, you live your life for love and, and you know, to, to impact people's lives, so, so when you walk away from them, they feel like they're worthy, mm -hmm. that they, um, I think we can all do that, regardless of the reason. Mm -hmm. Your reasons are different than mine, but, you know, I want to do the same thing. And so, um, sharing with each other. I think that's probably the most joyful you can be, you know what I mean, is to re reach out to each other. We're all human beings trying to get through this life. So I think they need to be heard. They need to be validated. When I was growing up, and when I look back now, I realized that, you know, what was labeled as being, you know, a rebellious teen was me dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety. It was never taken seriously. Of course, we didn't know as much back then as we do now. So when Spencer started having problems, and she says high school, but I actually started in middle school. And I remember she had a, uh, a, a band recital thing. And she locked herself in the bathroom at school, and it was a, a scheduled thing. So 
her whole band or ensemble was up, you know, to perform, and she's in the bathroom, locked in the bathroom. I'm livid because I'm thinking, what is wrong with you? And this was our first kind of indication that there might be something wrong. Um, so I'm trying to get out of the bathroom. I cannot get her out of the bathroom. So they have to rearrange the entire schedule for her ensemble, and everybody's, you know, like, what's your, you know, because they don't understand. I didn't understand at the time. So finally, they're the last ones up, and we have to, to move on. And she's, you know, we finally get her out of the bathroom, and she's crying, and she's miserable. And sorry. It's, let's just be real. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember her band director was awesome, and he was like, you know, I had um, performance anxiety too, and so I'm thinking, okay, so this is just something that's going to happen when she performs. And but she had been a cheerleader forever, and that's what everybody said, but she's a cheerleader. What's wrong? You know, and all I could think was, well, okay, maybe because she'd been doing that since she was so young, um, and there's so many other kids on the mat with her that, you know, it's, you know it just doesn't make her feel that bad. But we found out later that that wasn't the case. But anyway, as, we were, as she was sitting there, she was messing up because she couldn't see her music. I'm behind her just crying my eyes out because... <laughs> Sorry. Because she's in pain. And I don't know how to help her. And I was mad at her. And now she's miserable. And, you know, it was this whole thing. And that kind of started it. That was the... You know, the precursor to all the other stuff that came. And then she was just sad a lot. And then she would say that, I'm just sad. I don't know why I'm sad. And so, you know, again, well, what can we do to make it, you know, make you feel better? How can we, you know, you know, as I look back, there was a lot of signs that we didn't see. So I would say just... <clears throat> Pay attention, you know. When your child tells you they're sad and there's not a reason, something hasn't happened, that would be a, a clue to me that there's more going on. And my advice would be to listen, ask a lot of questions, and reach out to those that you know. Because um, there's people out there who, who are willing to help. Mm -hmm. There's people out there who realize you're hurting, mm -hmm. but they don't want to be intrusive there you know so you know my advice would be just to reach out as much as you can <laughs> thank you so much yeah. for um everything you shared i know it wasn't that comfortable so thank you for being my victim slash um friend who would do this for you um